Wow. Hi guys. Paul here from PA Produce. Whew, cold, cold Thanksgiving day here in Pennsylvania. Cold in the house. Got the wood stove going downstairs now. Cold. Beers. Cold. Brought them over for my parents when I was over there at uh, Thanksgiving. Had them in the truck for you know an hour because I was cleaning out the basement. And even with the warming the truck up, driving them here, letting them sit for an hour and a half on the table, they're just cold. And they were basement temperature to start with, so cold. It's a cold day here in PA. Ice everywhere. But all the outside cats had a beautiful Thanksgiving dinner, so the feast has been shared all around. So now let's get into this. Found these two down in the basement of the dungeon at my parents' place when I was there rooting through the beer selection. Both 2015 vintages of KBS from Founders Brewing Company, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and 2015 vintage of Sunday Morning Stout from Firebacher, Pennsylvania, Easton, Pennsylvania, to be precise. Founders, Firebacher, 2015. Why not? Man flu. Let's do the man flu right. Bam, bam. There it is. <clears throat> so, let's crack these things open. Let them warm up. Get the chill of the evening off them. Watch that for it. Label out, of course, bitches. Let's get it all in there. Screw it. What's up, Jungle One? Okay. As you can see, it did finally pour with a little bit of head. Pinky out, of course. It did pour with a rocky topped head, but the, the rest of it's nicely tightly compact bubbles. And of course, up to the light, black as pitch. We'll pop that down there. And we'll get this one cracked open. As soon as I saw both of these, I was like, you know what? They're both the same. I was like, Actually, I saw this one first. I was like, oh my god, that's 2015. That's crazy. Ooh, pouring gloopy already. Nice. Black is pitched. No real head for me on this one. Let's try to invigorate it. Ooh, nothing. Just a ring off this one. Just a ring of head off this one. I found out that I had a KBS down there as well. Just dark as pitch. No real head. It's just a ring. And just, the, uh, just like the other one, it's the pinnacle of a ruby hue at the pinnacle of the glass. Here they are. So up. You can already tell the difference between the two right there. Okay. Let's give you some information about this beer real quick. The 2015 highly acclaimed KBS is a flavored stout, obviously, and it's an ale brewed with chocolate and coffee Asian oak bourbon barrels, as you might already know. This one is bottled on 3-5-2015, 70 IBUs, and it says instead of the back, here it says it's 11.2 alcohol by volume. Right there. Okay. Now we'll go over to the Sunday morning stout here quick. Let's see. It's a stout aged in bourbon barrels with coffee at 11.3 alcohol by volume. So only one, a 0.1 difference between ABVs of this one. This one is not brewed with chocolate. That's the only difference. Yeah. These bottles are cold. Things are cold. It's just cold. Everything started at the cellar, but when they were getting transported and moved around, no matter how long they sat, man, I should have put them right on the heater. Though. So yeah, I should have learned my, from my own, uh, from all my joyous friends and falters of drinking stouts too cold, I should have put them on the heater. Warm them right up. Put them in the oven. Okay. Fight the man flew the hard way. Let's smell this one. Cheers. Still loads and tons of spicy, peppery, caramel burger. Roasty, toasty, little char. Again, a peppery caramel bourbon. And a hint of make, uh, baker's chocolate. Mm. 
This one is a little bit more. It's not as bright. It's there. It's more muted. The the, cap, the caramel pepper bourbon is there. It's not as bright as the KBS, but it's still there. Roasty toasty. A little bit of char. What be going down, Red Beard of the World? I'm just doing a, a head to head. That's all you know. Whatever. Yep. Roasty toasty on both one. I'm getting a little nuance of vanilla on this one too, un unlike uh, the KBS. That's more just caramel, peppery, roasty, toasty. This one has a little bit of the roasty, toasty tones too. The peppery caramel is a little bit muted, but I'm getting a little bit of a widening with that muted part, and I'm getting a little bit of vanilla in there too. But there we go. It's going to take a long time to do this review. I'm not going to lie. I, after, when I started pouring these things, I realized how damn cold these bottles actually were still, which they shouldn't have been. But my house is not warm. Basically, I have to, I have to burn books just to stay warm. That's why my library is always so big at the beginning of the year, not so much at the end. All right, is SJ here? You gotta be kidding, kidding me! I didn't see his name because I was doing, I was fondling my glasses. So I didn't see the screen. There we go. Let's get into this. Cheers. So hopefully, no, oh, it is. It's SJ4. How are you doing, brother? I got that book for you. I got to give to you, by the way. Forbidden Tales, all about Potter County, God's country, the Black Forest. It's a bit thin, but you're expecting that. Okay, moving on. It's a medium side of a full body. It's actually nice. But the problem is it tapers down. At the end of the palate, it waters down a little bit, and then you get that low side of a low body, high side of a medium body. But right that first bit, I was like, oh my god. Am I going to say it? Am I going to say it? I don't think I'm going to say it. And then it tapered down. Like, damn, I got to say it now. It's a bit thin. But wow. Let's get back into this one. Yeah, a little bit of a watery tone in there too. It just kind of waters down the end. Mutes everything a little bit. Minerality is kind of coming up. A weird minerality is coming up. You still get car caramel, pepper, bourbon, roasty toasty still going on there. Something like a muted, a muted overly burnt espresso is also in there now, a little bit muted, so the coffee's fading down, it's giving you kind of a weird, uh, obscure uh, burnt espresso, espresso note. If I remember, if I remember correctly, 2015 was very char forward. I'm getting the char still, very charry. All around the palate is a lot of char, a lot of barrel char, and I'm still getting it now. And that's what I remember with 2015 before. And there's no difference here. Very cigar-esque in the quality, minus the dark fruits. I'm not, I was thinking of you'd pull dark fruits out of this. I'm not really getting a lot of dark fruits. If there was, it would be very cigar forward. Absolutely. That's what I remember too. Mm. Okay. Still in invigorating a beautiful dark baker's chocolate head on this one. All right. I should probably have water, but I'm going to cleanse my palate with more beer. I just figured that would make sense. I don't know. Okay. So right now we have some muted tones going on a lot of char work around on the palate a little minerality at the back the peppery caramel bourbon is still there roasty toasty not picking up on the chocolate not picking up on the chocolate muted espressos of course so let's get on to the sunday morning stout 2015. the just like it's just looking at you then, there you go right now it's just looking at me like i'm not gonna give you any head Basically, it's like my ex-wife looking at me right now. No head. Son of a bitch. Huh? Anyway, let's get into it. Cheers. <laughs> <sighs> 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 
same there is the same minerality in the back in the back end of this a little roasty toasty charred minerality in the back star anise right off the bat star anise right off the bat mixing with that peppery caramel bourbon so that this one's pulling dark fruit which for some reason this one is not maybe the dark fruits being overshadowed by a little bit too cold still we'll give it time and the fact that it might be a little bit too charry No, I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say these are boozy at all. I think the booze has started to acclimate itself pretty nicely. The overbearing um, tones on here that you have to get used to right now, I think, is the char. I think char, the char is probably the most predominant note in both of these beers. They're both pretty charry. So as, as a lot of those other flavors have started to mellow out over time, the char has either kicked up or stayed the same. So the char is a little bit crazy now and again. Wow. Okay. Both of these beers are a little bit muted. I'm just going to say it right now. They might be a little bit cold, but I'm trying my best. There is a little bit more dark fruit notes on the Sunday morning stout. Caramel peppery bourbon is still the winner here. It's a little bit more muted, but a star anise is kind of wrapping around everything, giving you a little bit more of a dark fruit note. The char isn't as predominant on this one as, but, excuse me, 2015. There's carbonation, hey! And I'm finding both e equally drinkable. But the alcohol legs on this sound bitch, look at that stickiness. That is just sticky. Well, can't say too many bad things about that stickiness either. Man flu. Man flu. In solidarity of Peter, I'm making sure I do all the reviews that I shouldn't be doing right now. Man flu style. Because fuck man flu. I find Weyerbacher is either a hit or a miss on their beers. Yeah, Founders is typically always very solid. They were, and then they suck shit through a straw. Then they got better again. That's the kicker there. Because Big Luscious and some of the the Sweet Reputes or Mango Magnifico and that Wizard, Lizard of Cause, that can almost suck a dick. Um, but then they got back on track. However, their prices are exorbitantly too fucking high, especially for their 750s, which now they have this amazing idea to force it upon the United States, all their 750s, while they send the actually more reasonable price, 12 ounces, off seats. Capitalism is about its finest. Hey. Isn't that good? What if I just hold them like this? I am right. Thank you. This opens whole new vistas for me. That's crazy. What is that all about? I'm half aroused now. Okay. This one is way more clean, sticky. The mouthfeel on this one, it's oily. This one lends itself to an amazing drinkability by being a bit thin. This one is on the medium side of a full body, barely tapers down to that low side of a full body, but it's sticky. It is lingeringly sticky, sludgy almost. And I think it's actually gotten sludgier with age instead of thinning out. This one might have thinned out a little bit with age, but I kind of always remember founders just having a very light body. And I mean, not super light, but they're on the lighter side. This one is just tar, which is great. A lot of sharp char in this one too. Char, roasty toasty. It's just so roasty toasty char that I'm not pulling the coffee anymore out of this one. Pulling roasty toasty char, smokiness. Unfortunately that vanilla that I got in the nose is not translating to the taste. 
It's more dark, charry, roasty. You do get a little bit of that star anise, dark fruit on the for forefront, mixing with that caramel peppery bourbon. But unfortunately, again, the caramel peppery bourbon isn't as bright as the KBS for 2015. So, be that as it may, let's go back. I think it's. I think this is going to be one of those deals where each beer has its high points and low points, and they're kind of equivocating each other. So where they're basically going to be even in the end. It almost kind of seems that way right now. Spoiler alert. Because where this doesn't shine forward, this does. Where this doesn't shine forward, this seems to. Body-wise, this is the winner. Bright caramel purple bourbon this is the winner dark fruit this is the winner that's what it seems to be going right now at this point in time but there's more to be drinking and i can restart vinyl i have the technology mm. kbs is just a good beer the brightness of this beer is the i think one of the key factors the bright peppery caramel of this beer. The easy drinking body is actually a plus to this beer. <coughs> it lends itself to the drinkability. A mix of these two could be something special. You might actually see that very soon, too. Um, um, what were they going to say? Oh, and the alcohol by volume is completely mixed. And if you like a little char, you have no problem with spirit. Mm. I'm getting something in there that's reminding me of a little bit of a star anise. A little bit. A raisin star anise, but it's so muted. It Again, it's in that pipe tobacco uh, sl slight pipe tobacco tone, which I love. I love that kind of pipe tobacco tone. It doesn't have. I remember this not having that any of that in, in the original, in the original uh, release of it. But now they're in the back in the chart. It's starting to come out a little bit more. I doubt it's. I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's warming up that much, but uh, it's only going to warm up to room temperature, which is fucking cold. I'm cold. It's cold. Anymore. I'm going to be hovering around the instant incandescent bulb here pretty soon. Yeah, so far, to me, this is standing up amazingly well. I don't get the... Oh, hey, what's up? Lagadiness, uh, I can't get that one. If I could get that one, shit would be going down. Oh, Willetized, I don't have that one. I can't get it. I've had the High Westified by Lagunitas, but I've never had the Willetized. If I could get that one, a head-to-head -head would be amazing. But unfortunately, unfortunately, I can't get that one rating. That would have been fun, though. Ooh. The sharp, dark fruit in this at the front is a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. The bourbon is down. The coffee is down. Not really picking up too much muted baker's chocolate. Nuance of it, but not really adding. Maybe a hint of dark chocolate in the in the char there. This is becoming more of a charry, dark, dark fruit bomb. Instead of a bourbon barrel aged beer still. Um, so that being said, I'm kind of leaning towards KBS as far as overall grading. As who's head to head standing up with the test of time. Yeah, that still fills your palate up with lots of nice, expanding earthiness, pepperiness, char, I guess woodiness if you want to call it, caramel. It leaves you dry though. It does leave you dry. There's a lot of attacking. Hold on for a second. There's so much silence. I'm starting to hear myself think and that means my demons come out and we don't want that to happen. All right, then, I'm sorry, I missed that comment. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I'm saying, um, and that's hard, I can do that. Mm. Okay. 
This thing, for me, is getting a 9. It's really, really tasty. Still, I think the char is still predominant. I think when I had this, the char was predominant. It's not overbearing, but the char is still predominant. You have a lot of bright pepper and caramel bourbon wafting around the palate. You gain something that reminds me of pipe tobacco, a little bit of hint of dark fruit, nothing too, too, too obtruse, but a little bit. Blending in with that char, giving you that pipe tobacco tone. 11.2, completely hidden still. Absolutely, it's a bit thin. It's on that low side of the full, high side of the medium body, but it lends a drinkability. I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10 for this one. 70 IBUs, that could, I could I'd be working a lot with that earthy char too, that's 70 IBUs. Probably cardboardy a little bit with the, uh, if the just the basic hops are just showing without the char, but that's fine. All right, let's get this one out. Mm -hmm. I went down the wrong pipe for a second. See that? Wow. This one, it almost reminds me of that double fudge from, is it Evil Twin? Where it has a little bit of that nuance of extract or over added additions of oats and over additions of baker's chocolate to give it to kind of a, a viscous, this the the viscosity, the stickiness. But by that happening, it kind of, it's kind of muting a lot of the subtle characteristics. And you're almost left with a blanket, um, a blanket of, of muted, like dark chocolate and baker's chocolate covering up a lot of those nice nuances to give you a better body and a better kind of character. Double that double fudge was absolutely like that. And I'm, I feel like like it's it's so sticky, it's covering my palate up with a layer of that. So I'm not getting a lot of nuances that might be in there. It just feels that way, the way you drink it, the way it coats around your mouth. It's a nice body, absolutely sticky, sludgy, good. Dark fruits are coming through. The, you're lo you lost some of that bourbon that was in there, for, unfortunately. There's a zip of it, and then it kind of goes away. That star anise is there. Char is not too bad. But I would probably say this is, uh, if I want to go head to head, KBS wins. KBS is still standing up. Test the time, the whole deal, the bourbon, the, the what you buy this for is that barrel. The barrel is still shining through. The bourbon is still shining through. The base beer is still shining through. The only thing you lost with this one, like I said, the, the espresso char is more just like overly co the cooked coffee now. You're kind of getting that. But the coffee's kind of gone. You don't really get the coffee. In exchange, you get nuances of dark fruits way in the back with the char, but the coffee's gone. With this one, I can't detect coffee at all. Just a little barrel char way in the back. Everything's muted. Everything's, like I said, covered in that blanket of, um, of almost like muted dark and baker's chocolate and then um, oats. Kind of a weird viscosity blanket. So it's a little bit muddled, a little bit obscure. Being that it is, I'm going to give it an 8. I think it's an 8. 8 out of 10. It's still good. It's just not didn't handle the aging as well as I was hoping. I was hoping it was going to be still slapping your face in the bourbon like it was originally, mixing all these dark fruits up, and then everything else can just run along. But unfortunately, things got lost in translation. So anyway, that's 9 out of 10 for KBS 2015, 8 out of 10 for Weyerbacher Sunday Morning South 2015. I usually like PA to win in everything, but that didn't happen right now. But there we go. More together. You can see, I don't know if you can tell how sticky this glass is. It just literally just coats the glass. That's how sticky and viscosity, the, the viscosity of stickiness it is. Frank, yep, Frank and beer time. Mix them up. See what happens. See if you can get ahead now. Hmm? 
She won't give you head. You forced that bitch, dude. Did I even say that out loud? Oh, son of a bitch. There's a head. That's even darker than the head was originally. That's nice. Still sticking nice. Oh my god. Now, if you I don't know if you can see the alcohol legs just forming on this thing now. Holy shit. Yeah, it is. Really. <laughs> it's, that's, that is a whole bed sheet and comforter of alcohol legs nestling in for the night. That's crazy. All right. Good aroma. Now, super sticky, just the way I like it. Now, I have to blow my nose. Excuse me, this is rude. Yeah. Ah, I'm back. Okay. Ugh. Now, now you're getting caramel, peppery bourbon, star anise, and raisins. Uh-huh. Now you're getting, like, <laughs> beer alchemy is fun. Now you're getting pecans and almonds. Yep, you're getting all those beautiful rich tones. Wow. Now everything's coming together. Now we're doing something. Now we're getting something. Now we're cooking with fire. All right, let's get a aroma. Or, well, we just did that. Taste. Cheers. Now that's a body. That's good. That kicked everything up. Gotta itch my nose again. I like this one. Bauhaus, just in case you're wondering. Now it kicked everything up to a minimum of a low side of a full body. So this is right on point now. Drinkability's still there. Smooth as silk. I'll tell you what, smooth as silk now. Holy crap. Breathing in all that caramel and dark fruit at the same time. It's translating pretty nice. The minerality is still there. There's a subtle minerality that I can really taste with through that char. It's coming through. Char. Baker's chocolate. Dark chocolate on the sides. Dark chocolate working away on the palate with that char. It's still muted though. It's still a little bit muted with all that viscosity, those blankets I told you about in the other one. But it's bringing everything to the table now. Dark chocolate, milk chocolate, hints of baker's chocolate. Actually, let me reverse that. Dark chocolate, baker's chocolate, hints of milk chocolate in the back lingering now. You get a little bit of a dark fruit note. Char is still working away, but now it's balanced completely. Lovely burp. Wow. Mm. Caramel and fruits on the burp. Very nice. Beautiful nuttiness at the front, too, now. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Why fight when we can just get along? Collaboration without litigation. It's drinking like soap. Absolutely amazing. Nothing is evasive now. No alcohol problems. No booziness. No char problems. The body's beautiful. Sticks around. Lingers. You can smack your lips on this one. The blend is for the win. It's, it's just it's just the good thing. It's what should have happened a long time ago. Now look at how that's sticking. That is a sticky, sticky beer. Aduva. Aduva. There you go. Anyway, we got a hell of a duva going on right there. Actually, 
be right back. Let's pull a DJ. Let's pull a DJ. Here, put this in here too. Get that in there too. That's, uh, gotta move something out of the way. There we go. That's a lot. There we go. There we go. I'm back. Just had to get a Kentucky dishwasher going. With all this stickiness, you really want to clean this glass up the right way, you know? I don't know if I can clean this all the way up without... Wow. It's so sticky that it doesn't even want to come off sometimes with the alcohol. Put some old Forrester in the glass. Probably not going to slam it. Just going to enjoy it. Wow. There you go. Some 1870 Old Forester. Ooh, baby. I just did. I just did clean the glass with liquor. It's very important that you do a Kentucky dishwasher. Or a Scotch dish, you know, a Scottish dishwasher, if you so want. You just got to clean this glass up, you know. Mix it around, you know. Here we go. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Cheers. Well, so far, there it is. <laughs> 9 out of 10 for the 2015 Founders KBS from Grand Rapids, Michigan. An 8 out of 10 for the 2015 Weyerbacher. Sunday Morning Stout from Easton, Pennsylvania. And a mix, for me, is a big 9.5. That thing was going amazing a well. Wow. Of course, it wasn't a 10, but it was damn near close. So this has been Paul from PA Brew News. Thank you for joining me, everybody, especially for the surprise Kentucky dishwasher, which was 100 out of 100 for that one, for sure. Hope you enjoyed the Bauhaus in the back. I'm having a great time. Enjoying my night off. Back to work tomorrow. But hey, tis what it is. Anyone who wants to hang out, let me know. No, thank you, Drunken One, for joining me. And SJ Poor, the master, the man, the champ. Got that book. I got to give it to you at some point in time. I just bought another copy to give to you. So, because I think you'll... <coughs> I figured instead of just you borrowing mine, I bought you one. You'll really appreciate it. Anyway... This has been Paul from PA Brew News. Cheers, Red Beard, you unbearded bastard. Grow your beard back, you're ugly. Anyway, this is Paul from PA Brew News. Get a hold of it. Uh, if you want to hang out. Oh, it's, uh, the dishwasher's fighting me. And I like it. I like a struggle. I like it when she struggles. Well, on that note, I gotta go. See ya. Cheers. Bye-bye. Watch that finger. It's coming. Watch your nerves. <laughs>